All right, this is Dolores Cannon again with the, uh, the Metaphysical Hour. And I'm really glad to be back live tonight. I want to tell everyone last week why, about like why I didn't do the show. Uh, we had a terrible ice storm that went through Arkansas. You probably saw on the news it went through Arkansas, then it ended up in Kentucky. And this is, they said it's the worst ice storm to ever hit northwest Arkansas. But we had trees down, uprooted on houses and limbs all over the place. You couldn't even drive down the highways or the, or the roads. They were just completely covered with downed limbs. And, of course, the power went out. And we were out of electricity for eight days, and we just got it back a day or so ago. So we're really glad for that. That's why I couldn't do the show last week. Well, you know, the weather has been getting continually stranger. We don't know what to expect next. But you don't miss it until you don't have it. So now it's back on and we can be warm again. All I had was a fireplace to keep us warm during all of that. So anyway, we're back on the air now live, and I've got a very special guest tonight. His name is Anthony Miles. And he's the director of the movie documentary, Fast Walkers. And we're going to be talking about UFOs and things like that tonight. Uh, let me give out the toll-free number before I bring him on. If anyone wants to call in and ask questions to Mr. Miles, the number is 877-876-5227. Eight seven seven eight seven six five two two seven. Okay, are you there, Anthony? Yes, Dolores, I'm right here. <laughs> okay. Here. But you know, one thing I do want to tell people: uh, the movie. You said to call it a movie documentary. Yeah. A yeah. It's documentary a, or what? Yeah, yeah. It's a feature length documentary. Uh, when we say feature, feature length, we mean like a feature length yeah. movie. And, okay. Uh, yeah. One thing I want to tell people, the name is unusual. When I first heard it, I didn't know what it meant, Fast Walkers. But I believe you said that is the government's code name for UFOs. Is that correct? You know, the, the term Fast Walkers, uh, from what I understand, is from uh, the classification that NORAD gives uh, objects that come into the uh, Earth's atmosphere in the United States airspace. Oh, because I'd never heard that term before, and it, that's what I thought was rather unusual. Mm-hmm. But you've done several films, but this one was Fast Walkers, and that's the website that you have. It's called yeah. that, too. Yeah, that's right. Fastwalkers.com is where it's at. And, you know, you're in our, you're in our movie, and that was uh, sure an, an enlightening experience for me. One of the. Are you, uh, are you there? Yeah. Well, I thought you you got cut off. Well, yeah, oh, I was, that. and you know when I when you they sent me the copy and I was watching it and I was thinking, where in the world did I film that? I don't <laughs> even remember. <laughs> we. Uh, but I was really proud to be in the film. But uh, before we get going on what the film's about, Anthony, mm-hmm. let's tell everybody about yourself, about your background. You know, okay. How did you get into this this whole thing? Well, I'll give you the short story first, and then if you want to go into deeper background, I'll give you that as well. Okay. Um, I uh, my parents had an advertising agency, my my father and my mother, and I was always interested in motion pictures and and video and those kind of things, and so they they did some video work uh, on the the low end quality, I would say. And that intrigued me, and so I, I got interested in the family business and got interested in the video side and kind of grew and developed those skills and the quality of our equipment and those kind of things so that we could do um, very much uh, greater quality production. And that's kind of how that developed. Um, my, my, my personal background, uh, if you're interested in that at all, um, it's, is well, I you know I know you know I'm doing doing a lot of filming for documentaries and 
a lot of them are just with one little camera, and I don't. I think they're very low quality. I don't know if they're ever going to sell or not. So everybody mm-hmm. out there is trying to make things. But I think what you did is very well done. It's a high-quality movie. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate the credit that you're giving me. <laughs> the truth is, well, is that it was... Hmm? You haven't been you or your group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely a group effort. You know, I, I can't take all the the um, the credit. My father, Robert Miles, was one of the producers and one of the writers. Uh, Bruce Jessup was also a producer, and he's in Germany. And we had some other help. Uh, we had another editor that was Stoyan Chereshirov. He was in Germany at the time. He's a Bulgarian gentleman. And uh, we had some animation assistants out of Canada. And uh, so it was really kind of a multi-international team project, and that was one of the things that excited me about it, is that we could put aside our borders and our differences and make a film that can kind of connect with the world and bring the UFO information or extraterrestrial information to the world in a way that would kind of bring down some of those barriers. Well, that's one thing that I liked about the way you did it. You know, I speak at UFO conferences all over the world, and there's too many speakers, and the focus is on negativity. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like that, because in my work, I've found them to be positive. And I don't like the way they try to scare people and bring in the negativity. And they're always telling me, the other speakers are saying, oh, you're not finding the truth because you're not finding the evil and the horror. And I said, that's because it's not there. Mm. So that's why I really like the way you focused on the positive. Yeah. Yeah, we really, that was important to us. We wanted to, we didn't want to create any walls unnecessarily, and we wanted to kind of bring down the barrier of information exchange or of education. So we wanted to present the information with a little bit of a historical slant in the beginning and then bring it up to more of a modern uh, or somewhat modern uh, approach and then take it into kind of where we thought it might be going in the future with more of a spiritual aspect and how we connect with um, the, if you want to call them extraterrestrials or, you know, or our brothers or whatever you, however you classify them. Uh Uh-huh. I think that's where the focus should be, really. Yeah. I know but that, uh, you, you did tell me on the phone yesterday that your father had an experience, and that was one of the reasons you got interested in in UFOs. Was that what it was? You know, that's the personal story that I was going to tell if you wanted me to. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing it. <laughs> okay, well, it, it's, a, it's kind of a, a funny story uh, for me now, and as a child it was kind of something that I rebelled against a little bit. Uh, I'll just start out by saying that. My dad, uh, my dad w- wrote a movie uh, in 1970, 71, and actually sold it to Columbia Pictures, a mo- motion picture script, and uh, that was uh, the Safe Space uh, motion picture, and that was before Star Wars and before Star Trek and all that kind of thing, and it was really a progressive, uh, progressive science fiction uh, idea at that time, and. He had an experience that kind of led him down that path before that script process or before I was ever born. Uh, From my understanding, uh, he actually was contacted by extraterrestrials from Jupiter, the planet Jupiter in our system, and was taken on a a spacecraft and was given uh, a tour and a briefing and showed... uh, you know, kind of what our future could hold if we weren't careful, that kind of a thing. And, and honestly, I don't know the full depth of, of his experience, but um, that's, that's the basis for it. And he did say, and this, this is the part that involves me particularly, that before I was ever born, they told him that I, he was going to have a son and what's to name me uh, and, uh, and that kind of thing. And for people who don't know, my full name is Anthony Tribune Miles, and the middle name being Tribune, the first name being Anthony. When you put that name together, and this is the weird part about it when it comes about with a a program like Fast Walkers, that my name actually means carrier of the truth, champion of the people. Oh, okay. So, or so I so I've been told. That's that's the way it it was told to me. So okay. But was there anything else about the story, the uh, 
the FSO that your father had that he told you about? Anything um, else that happened on it? You know, trying to piece together uh, somebody's experience, and this is part of the the uh, the wonderful uh, experience I've had in making fast walkers is. How do you make heads or tails of somebody's UFO experience if you haven't actually had a UFO experience yourself or if you haven't made that leap mentally? Um, and when I've talked to him about it, he shared with me that, and when he's, he's talked to people, that literally, and this is hard to grasp, that, that he was on his boat in, in, the, in the harbor in Hawaii uh, and then he was either transported or something to LaGuardia Airport in New York and then got on a craft actually at the airport and then went from there. And his, uh, his best estimations are that that was kind of a, a dimensional jump to where, uh, obviously, in, in our reality here, that wouldn't be possible, uh, or as we think of it, it wouldn't be possible. But in another dimension, in another reality, with the assistance of those beings, that that kind of an experience might actually be possible. And that's, that's pretty much um, the most I know of it. He told me that he thought the planet was beautiful and that the energy of the beings was just incredible and the vibration just, you know, the energy felt so good that, um, you know, that it was very positive. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I've, I've talked about my books on UFOs on this show many times, and I've mm-hmm. done a lot of work with dimension and dimensions travel and things like that. So I can believe what you're talking about. Yeah. And they do have the ability to go back and forth between dimensions. Yeah. I just, I've never heard of one who remembered doing it, because usually they may block the memory out afterwards. Yeah. You know, I was, I was watching your interview today, actually, from the, the original Fast Walkers uh, taping, because I wanted to have a little bit of, of background uh, and, and recall and have that fresh in my memory kind of your perspective, and I, I, it was so, so interesting to me to listen to, listen about your work and, and the philosophy as, as I'm not, I don't consider myself um, a researcher uh, per se, but I, I do consider myself somebody who's able to uh, sit down and talk with and potentially bring some of the information uh, to the public and connect with the researchers in a way maybe that would allow the public to to get that information and actually be able to assimilate it in a way that would make sense and not put them off to the information. Yeah, that is the hard part. Because I've been investigating it for over 20 years now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the beginning, I didn't know anything about it. It was all new and, you know, nobody knew anything back then. It was back when Whitley Schreiber wrote the book Communion mm-hmm. and kind of opened up the, the Pandora's box, so to speak. So I had to start out with no information, but really it's amazing what you can uncover because I've Mm. I've investigated the crop circles and, Mm -hmm. you know, all of my work is, I'm always looking for lost knowledge is what I call it. But um, you mentioned that they showed your father the future. Was it uh, what we would do, what would happen to the world if we don't do something or what was it they showed him? You know, I I can't really go into depth in that because... He and I have really never had, and this is probably very sad, actually, he and I have never really had an in-depth conversation uh, on uh-huh. that. And, you know, I've, as, as a personal aside or a personal issue, and this is something I'm trying to explore myself in this whole uh, journey, if you will, into, you know, more of a, a paranormal realm, is to come to grips with, you know, the reality of, of what's going on out there, um, so I don't have a lot of information on that. He does, uh, he does in, his, in his movie script and book, in his Safe Space uh, script, he does allude to some of the ideas, I believe, of uh, possible you know, planet destruction or, or something like that. Um, or, you know, and, but that's certainly not something that's you know, set in stone at all. But if, if we went the ways that we were going and, and trashing and devastating the planet... Uh, especially at that time, I think that there's there's a great focus now in our world where so many more people are aware of and, and are interested in uh, taking care of the planet versus, you know, when people had no idea, I don't think, even in the in early, uh, in the 60s and, and the 70s. 
Yeah, that's the information I've been getting, and I've been lecturing on that, too, is that yeah. uh, they want this information to get out so that we can change the future that they saw yeah. because we were really headed down the wrong path. Sure. But what I'm getting is that there are enough people now who are aware of these things that we're beginning to turn it around and turn the corner. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the movie script that your father did, was it ever uh, produced? Uh, the, the interesting thing about the original Safe Space story <clears throat> is that it was actually green-lighted by, by Columbia Pictures, who at that time was a major, major studio, who I believe is Sony now. But um, they had an Academy Award-winning writer working on that project uh, as a part of the production team to do the rewrites with my dad. And, you know, I guess they went around and around and around for about a year, but they never really could get the project going. It, you know, at that time, the science fiction genre and an idea of this scale and scope was just such a large production that I think that they, they weren't able to, to completely move it forward. That's hard to imagine today. Uh, with all the modern special effects and, and things that we have. But at that time, you know, I think the, the challenge of doing that kind of thing was very difficult. So they, well, I they remember never they did. said when Star Wars was first, uh, you know, they proposed that, uh, they didn't think it would go either. Yeah. And some of the, the, uh, the actress they wanted to play it, she thought it would just be kind of like a hokey science fiction. But it was the special effects is what really made that. Yeah. And it opened up a whole new world out there. You bet. He was ahead of his time. Absolutely. And, you know, my dad <laughs> has been ahead of his time all of my life, and, it's you know, it's, it's caused a little bit of uh, turmoil for him to be, you know, as, as many brilliant people uh, being ahead of their time, they don't really fit, you know, the era of it's their day. It's time everybody to... else to catch up. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's why it took nine years for me to get my first book published, because it was ahead of its time. Yeah. They didn't even have uh, New Age bookstores back when I was writing in the beginning. So, <laughs> yep. So, you know, that's the problem. You have to wait till the rest of the world catches up with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, then, then was that where your interest in UFOs began? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, and this is probably not going to sound very popular, but okay. my interest, <laughs> I was really never interested in UFOs. I was more, um, I was more, I don't want to say put off by it, but because this was my dad's thing and it was so far out, and I always lived a life where we moved around a lot, and I was always looking for acceptance, the idea of, of UFOs and extraterrestrials was never an issue to me, but I really did want to fit in, so I never really um, pursued anything of that nature. I was more afraid of the really consequences. Under, you were rather embarrassed by him, I guess. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I was. I was embarrassed by that idea. But as I've grown and I've been become more educated, and certainly in this process with Fast Walkers, you know, my, my viewpoint has shifted dramatically. Um, one of the things that I'll say is that when we first, um, we interviewed you at the International UFO Congress, uh, I think in 2006, I believe, or maybe possibly 2005. I couldn't remember where it was because I do mm -hmm. a lot of interviews and I never even hear of anything ever coming of them, you know. Yeah, yeah. That was and, back then. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, in that process, you know, we had the opportunity uh, to interview literally the top people in the field. I think we have 35 of the world's top experts uh, on, on ufology in the Fast Walkers movie. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't use everybody that we were able to interview. So for me to be able to sit down one-on-one -on -one with these people, as I got to sit down with you and, and get kind of a, a first-hand information dump and to gather the knowledge from the top people in the field and hear that really changed my perspective. Um, you know, I thought I was going to go to a UFO convention and it was going to be a bunch of crazy people walking around. You know, I, I had no frame of reference. And the opposite was true. I mean, all of these people, you know, and I don't want to say everybody, but most of these people were far more educated than I am, you know, much smarter, I would say, than I am, and, you know, really took this field very, very seriously. And to, to share the information. Yeah, I've been doing it so long. I know there are some, some nuts out there. There are some crazy people. 
But you know, I've been working with Bob Brown. I think I think I started the first conference I did with him was about 15 years ago. Yeah. And he has always uh, brought really top people from everywhere. And yep. he, you know, his conference goes on for a week, so yep. he has uh, all these speakers. And uh, so you had a good opportunity to be right there where they're all in one spot. You know, it was an incredible opportunity, and it you know even now the gravity of it. Um, if you really think about the opportunity to sit down with all those people and listen to them directly firsthand, uh, it, you know, it, it really was uh, incredibly opening. The experience was very, very, very opening, and it helped me overcome some of my own uh, issues in the process of creating the film. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for so long. I've been on the lecture circuit with the UFOs for at least 20 years, Mm-hmm. And during that time, I get to hear a lot of the same speakers again and again and again. So there are some out there who I say are the fakes, are the mm-hmm. wannabes. You know, mm-hmm. they want to be on this. But they, they would contradict themselves when I would hear them again. But those sure. kind of people don't last very long in, in the lecture circuit. After yeah. a while, people catch on that they're, they're not really not telling the truth. You know, they're mm-hmm. not... Uh, they're not accurate about it. They're not truthful. So they kind of fade away after a few years, and then mm-hmm. they drop off. But that's what I've noticed, and we begin to tell the, the real ones from the ones that are just, they want to be on the, onto this for whatever reason. You bet. Uh, you probably found the same thing, though. Definitely. Um, you know, in, in my limited experience overshooting on Fast Walkers for two weeks, um, of actual interview photography, uh, I, you know, I, I'm really surprised to say that probably almost everybody that we interviewed seemed very, uh, you know, very intelligent, very down to earth, very. Um, nobody really seemed like they were uh, out to to pull one over on anyone. There was, you know, maybe there was one or two that. Uh, you know, we talked to that it didn't resonate, you know, the way that I would like it to. But, uh, you know, I, I can't really say, you know, if it wasn't, you know. I don't, I don't want to say that there was any that were not, you know, good interviews. Yeah. Because they're all but good. But, you know, if you, if you do it enough, you begin to know when it's, it's not the truth. If you get, it doesn't feel right anyway. You bet. You bet. I tell you, when we sat down with Stephen Greer, with Robert Dean, with Stanton Friedman, Wendell Stevens, yeah. you know, when we talk to those guys, man, there is no question that when you're talking to them that what they are telling you is absolutely their reality, and that is truth. Um, you yeah, know, that's and, what and I mean, but the diff- they have been around forever, yep. just like yep. I have. It's, yep. Those are the ones, it, it has to do with the staying power, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what they're talking about has to have validity to it. Yeah. One of our goals for Fast Walkers was to, to really make a movie that would bridge the gap. Um, that's why it's not just a bunch of, you know, it's not completely loaded with, you know, UFO picture after UFO picture. We've got, you know, quite a bit of footage in there and pictures and those kind of things. But we really wanted to produce something that was uh, intelligent, that would resonate well, that would come across well, and that would ideally bridge the gap between you know, kind of this UFO community and mainstream, if you will. And that's one of the reasons we tried to shoot the thing in high definition and, and have the, the best production quality we could afford. But I really think that those people came across so well that that... Oh, yes. That's why I said. The, the photography was really very, very good. Thank you. I'm actually but, really but how sorry. Did get, how did you get the idea to make this, this movie? Mm-hmm. The uh, the actual sure sure the actual uh, the actual project was uh, started by my father Robert and by Bruce Jessup, which were the um, the the executive producer and the producer of the project. And I had the technical knowledge and the equipment um, to physically produce it, and they had kind of the drive and the inspiration and the background. You know, my dad with his experience and Bruce Jessup, the other producer, with he's got. Literally, I mean, I think he's been researching and investigating the field for probably over 20 years as well, um, just on his own and connecting with people and those kind of things, kind of behind the scenes. 
So they both were very, very interested. They had, they had become friends and connected, um, like-minded individuals that way, and really wanted to move forward with a project that would get out there and ideally help enlighten the public, not just the UFO community, but really be something that can bridge the gap to the public. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure we attained that goal, <laughs> but that well, was, I, I that think was you pretty did cool. a wonderful job. Thank you. But that's one thing I did, like I said, I did like, that you didn't focus on the negativity. But you just had the idea to do this and then do the interviews and put it together, or did you have a, a script or a plan on how you were going to organize it? Sure. We, um, we actually we did have a script. My dad wrote the, uh, the initial script, and then uh, myself and I believe Bruce Jessup had some input on the script. Uh, Bruce from kind of a, a what he thought would be uh, would have impact and and would be interesting to the audience and I I had input to it in the uh, in terms of what I thought would work better for for video and for documentary um, from a technical perspective so really my my dad Robert Miles uh, spearheaded it you know it's his it's always been his dream with his safe space project and safe space is really a lot more than just a movie or a documentary or those kind of things. It's, it's a concept. You know, the safe space premise or idea uh, really encompasses, you know, the idea that we can be a community that lives more in harmony together, um, which reminds me of when I was watching your interview today to talk about um, the ideals that the extraterrestrials want live by and that they would have for us live by more of a nonviolent culture that actually works together uh, in, instead of, Warring and, and those kind of ideas, and, and living more of a, a green, what we call green today, living more of a, uh, a lifestyle that's non-destructive to the planet and, and to the population, and living with energy sources and food sources that are uh, healthier for, for us and for the, the planet. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I think uh, that that is the goal. That. You know, we got away from it after, you know, we just all went toward the negativity, and they want us to get back to that because uh, otherwise uh, the world is, is in for, it's just going to be a mess the way it's going with the wars and the, what we're doing to the environment and everything. Mm-hmm. They definitely want us to turn it around. Yeah. So how do we but, do it, Dolores? <laughs> I know, that's the thing. One thing is you have to have the people interested. But I yeah. think more and more people are beginning to turn around to this. Sure. But I know when you began putting all these bits and pieces together, that's a lot of work, isn't it, to get it and, you know, yeah. to make it fit and to make sense out of it. You know, the, the editing process on Fast Walkers was very daunting and very challenging. Uh, at that time, the technology that we had for editing uh, wasn't as good as it is today, um, we had 50 hours of material, roughly, to go through, maybe more than that, to, to find the pieces, to put it together in a way that we thought would, you know, resonate with people and not, not push away, not push too hard with the information either for an audience that was potentially not somebody who was already into the field, but to really make a piece that would, that would appeal to more of a mass audience and enlighten people at least enough to look into it greater or deeper. Um, Mm -hmm. One of the, you know, like I said, I was watching your interview today, and I'm really sorry we didn't get to use more of your information because it it was so good. Your interview was so good. The way that you talked about the the different races of beings, you know, their motives and what that means to us, how, you know, how they've always been there helping us from the beginning and those kind of things and those ideas I think would be so wonderful to hear. Um, But, you know, with a with a movie, uh, you got about ninety minutes or so, and then you got to cut yeah. it off. You know, so that uh-huh. was that was definitely a challenge. Yeah, uh, I know because uh, you know, like when I'm doing these filming for documentaries, you can film for hours, and maybe they take a, a whole ten, fifteen minutes if you're lucky. They'll take yeah. that much. Yeah. So I know what you mean. It's just pick and choose. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you know, one thing I like too in the film is that you had the the priest from Italy. Oh yeah, that's where Paula Harris was doing the translation. Yep, yep. I, I tell you, that was that was really good because that brought in the uh, 
the spiritual aspect to show that there are priests. Hmm. They're not all against all of this, you know, and how it is yeah. connected to, to God. So there isn't any contradiction. Yeah, I don't absolutely. remember exactly what it said, but I said that was very important to put that aspect in there. Yeah, we, we uh, you know, we connected with Paula Harris, <clears throat> and we were very fortunate that she had uh, helped bring in uh, Monsignor Corrado Balducci uh, from Italy, the, the Catholic priest that you spoke of, uh, to the X conference uh, that same year, and we were able to interview him with Paula. And I tell you, I have never, I, I don't think I've ever been in a room with somebody who exuded such wonderful energy. I mean, this man was definitely, I believe he was of spirit, and that, you know, God really did work through him. He was so warm, so sincere. And, you know, for him to share that message that, you know, our brothers are out there, and they are looking down, and literally he said basically what you were saying in part of your interview that we didn't use. And he was saying that, you know, we have more of a propensity towards sin or towards war or hurting each other or than the extraterrestrials do. And they, they want for us to evolve as they are and really um, they want us to become more, they want us to become higher, I guess, uh, help me out, but so that we're more peace-like and loving, possibly, um, and less uh, concerned and consumed with, you know, war and and the things that go with, you know, power and control. Yeah. But I was trying to remember some other bits and pieces of the movie because I, it was, it's been a month ago that I watched it, but I do remember the priest. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, know there, I know all the people on there. You know, I've known at one time or another. You bet. But I was really put together very well. Oh, I do want to mention, is at the end of this month, uh, Bob Brown is having the, another uh, the UFO conference out there in Laughlin. That's right. Uh, this yep. is, I don't remember what number it is now, but he has this yeah. every year. Are you going to be there again? You know, uh, I probably am not going to be able to get out there this time to the, to the uh, International UFO Congress. I've, uh, I'm going to be having a, I'm so blessed, I'm going to be having a baby here in about the next two to three weeks. And I, I think oh, yes, was, you said that in the email. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, a little, a little boy is going to come into our world. And, uh, Do you have any other children? Not yet. Nope. He's our this, first this one. This is the first one. Yeah. Oh, the first yeah. one is always the special one. <laughs> yep. So that's right. You're going to be busy at the end of the month. That's, that's exactly right. Probably more so than I know. <laughs> Oh, you're, you, you don't know the half of it. You just want to see. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but anyway, I, I do think you said after the movie came out, it was premiered in certain places, wasn't it? That's right. Um, we had the opportunity to actually show the Fast Walkers film uh, in a movie theater on the big screen and to share it with an audience, uh, a sold-out audience. In, uh, in the first premiere was in Sholo, Arizona, up where my father actually resides, and uh, we had a wonderful group up there uh, that that helped us uh, present the movie in a digital form on the on the in the theater in high definition, and it just it it showed beautifully, and we were so excited, and you know the response was great, and it actually ran in that theater for a week or two, and I think outpaced. I think we were number two or number three for about two weeks up there over some of the bigger Hollywood movies. So there, there really was an interest uh, from people to see the film. And that was, that was really refreshing to see that, you know, um, an audience uh, in a rural community was interested in seeing, uh, you know, this type of information. Well, yeah, but, you know, that's the way, well, that's the way they started out with, with what to believe. They started showing yeah. it like that. Yeah. And they had sell-out crowds, and everybody thought, well, nobody's going to want to see a metaphysical movie. Yeah. So, you know, that's the only way to do it. And it shows there's an interest when you can have a sell-out crowd. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that we tried to do is really make it um, a positive experience for the audience. Um, we were able to work with some of the people who were in the film to come out for the premiere. I think we had Charles Hall there for... Um, either the first or the second premiere, because we did a premiere in Phoenix and a premiere in Sholo. And the one in Phoenix was uh, about a month and a half later, I believe. And we were, we were very fortunate to have Charles Hall. Robert Dean came out. Wendell Stevens came out to the premiere. Um, 
Uh, Al Tolman came out. He's the gentleman that provided us with the telescopic footage of the UFO in front of the moon uh, that's in the movie. Uh And I think we had a couple of other people there, too. And people got to meet those guys and, you know, firsthand. People who wouldn't go to a UFO conference, you know, they they got to meet these guys and talk to them and, and really see how legitimate and down-to-earth these people are. And uh, so that was great. Oh, yes, I, I know, well, you know, Wendell Steven is an old, old friend of mine. I've known yeah. him, I guess, 25 years. Yeah. And I've had those people on my radio show, so the people listening in know, know about him. But Wendell yep. is, is uh, really unique because he has the largest UFO picture collection in the world. Yeah. Yeah, and, and people and his, are always using those, you know, for different things too. You, you bet. But yes, yeah, so you know, people like that. That's what I mean. They're staying power. They've been in it so long mm-hmm. that uh, it shows their dedication to all of this. You bet. So are you going to do any more, uh, you know, showings in theaters? You know, it's it's hard to say. We we did also show the film in Canada. Uh, Victor Vigiani helped us uh, do a premiere up in Canada, and Paul Hillier was there. Um, as yeah. well at the presentation. My dad did that one up there. Uh, it's been showed at the, um, the International UFO Conference. We actually won uh, two EB Awards, their, uh, their, their International <coughs> Film Festival Awards, one for Best Soundtrack and one for the, the People's Choice Award, I believe, for uh, the film the year that, that it was screened there and, and that kind of thing. But at this time, we don't really have any other plans to, to show the film because it does take quite a bit of resources to take the film around and to promote it and those kind of things and areas. We would love for it to be shown more. I mean, as a team and as a group, we would love to get it out there. We'd love to get it into the theaters, but um, our resources are limited. You know, we did the, the film on a lower budget, and everybody pitched in and uh, really put in a lot of work and effort. But, uh, you know, the, the resources to, to market a film, uh, to compete against uh, mainstream Hollywood movie who spends eight, ten, twenty million dollars on uh, prints and advertising. <laughs> you know, you hardly get people to hear who you are uh, if you're lucky. You know. Yeah, I can see what you mean. You know, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it'd be just as difficult to get it on TV too, wouldn't it? Yeah, it probably would. And you know, we're very interested in that as well. And we're actually looking for uh, people to uh, to take the film to TV. Uh, we would love to see it on the Discovery Channel or, or something like that, or the History Channel, yeah. one of those places. Uh, our, our movie, though, is formatted in a, formatted in a way that uh, it's a little long, probably for for television, or it would have to be uh, broken up into probably two part episodes or something. Uh, because it's more of a movie, it's not really a television format, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but I think there are people out there who would be interested in this, because you see this type of uh, show on yeah. those programs all the time. Yeah, yeah, and you know, the the quality of those programs has gotten so much better, and it's there's so much good information in them that it's, uh, it's just wonderful to see that, that happening now. You know, the, the change in our media a little bit, uh, starting to, to have more of that information. And, you know, I, I yeah, think it's, that it's, it's very needed right now. Mm-hmm. And if we could okay, get, you know, people... You did say after this one, you did make another film, did you? You know, <clears throat> when we talked about the, uh, the difficulty in editing, and we had 50 hours of interviews, of these fantastic interviews, um, what we have done is we've, we've created another, pro- another product called Fast Walkers Open Files. And Open basically file. that's... Mm -hmm. that open files is basically um, the full interviews. Uh, If we may have used, you know, five or ten minutes of somebody's interview in the Fast Walkers movie, we're taking those interviews in in their entirety, basically, and making those available. We're putting three interviews on a disc. Usually it's about two and a half hours of material, and we're going to try to open up our library of information and make that available to people who are interested in it. uh, Okay. Is, is the, that one finished? Um, we have two of the volumes now. We have uh, Fast Walkers Open Files Volume 1, and that has Jim Mars, uh, Jerry Pippen, and Alfred Lambermont Weber, who's the, uh, the father of exopolitics. Uh, and those, they're in the first volume. And then in the second volume, and these are available, we have uh, Stephen Greer, uh, Commander Graham Bethune, and Len Horowitz. 
And uh, that's okay, the yeah, but the, and I, I, I knew Grant also, but he died a couple of years ago, didn't he? Yeah, he did, you know, and we, we sure appreciate his contribution to Fast Walkers. You know, to, to hear first. Yeah, because he gave me some of the pictures that he had taken, yeah. and I was using those in some of my lectures. So, uh, but yeah. he was an older man when I knew him. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. was, so you've was, got uh, footage there that cannot be replaced. Yeah, that's right. You know, he was he was very gracious to take the time and to sit in and, and share his experience with us. Uh, one of the experiences he talks about is literally uh, he was a pilot in the Navy. I believe it was the Navy, and uh, he was out in the middle of the ocean, and a, and a UFO actually came up out of the water. A flying saucer actually came out of the water, and he described a, a, kind of a telepathic knowing of the size of it and those kind of things and just a feeling of, of understanding of what the craft was and that that was meant to be for him at that time. And you know, to, to hear from somebody who's that caliber and to have them share that direct experience was, you know, it was really a blessing. <laughs> Especially for me, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm trying to understand. You know, I'm, I'm very interested in understanding, you know, the phenomenon and the metaphysical aspects of it and our spiritual components. One of the things that I'm super interested in, and when I was listening to you, is trying to understand our spiritual components, how that works, you know, and how we relate, and you know, how we can be more connected with the universe and 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 those types of things, and that, that reality, and our own human power, and our own human challenges, and how we can kind of maybe be better at living our lives in the world that we live in from a, a harmonious standpoint. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So you're really going in the right track. Yeah. Because that's and one, you know, my last book's a bit along that line, and I'm working on a new one now. I've got 15 books out there, and I'm working on three more. The one I've got enough material on, I'm going to call it, I'm thinking, calling it UFOs, A Different Perspective, mm. because I'm getting information now that is really explaining things the other ones haven't thought about. So, mm. you know, there is, it keeps growing. We're getting more and more all the time. We're getting more understanding. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no longer a science fiction for kooks, this is, is coming of age now. There's, there's more understanding in all of this. Sure. And I, I wish there was a way to, to download that information. <laughs> You've got 15 books, and all, all of them look really interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I just wish yeah, that I could... more all the time. Yeah. There are 20 languages now. I really uh, wish there was I a way I could... I could download that information so I would have the understanding that you have, but I'm sure that's not <laughs> possible. Well, it's going to be it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what are you working on right now? What is your project? If the uh, open files, it said more or less you've got that put together? Well, we have two volumes put together on open files, but we probably have enough material for somewhere between 12 and 20 volumes. Um, mm, that would be a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when I say it, when we say it's uh, kind of the open files, we came up with that name because really we have this information sitting on the shelf that's, you know, just great interviews. It's, it's literally the interviews from Fast Walkers. So if, if you like the quality of the, the Fast Walker interviews, this is the same, literally the same high-definition material that we're cutting into, you know, the raw and uncensored full-fledged interview uh, with each of these guys. That's something that's kind of ongoing. Uh, my dad and I have been working on more of a, a narrative movie script, uh, and it's been a big goal and a dream of mine uh, for a long time to produce an actual uh, movie motion picture and uh, something that, you know, is more, seems like it's fiction or it's a fiction movie, but ide has real ideas in it that kind of yeah. resonate and translate from the fiction to reality and kind of help um, with... I mean, sci-fi is very interesting just about to everybody, I think. And yeah. to take some of those ideas and, and move forward with, you know, some reality in the narrative, I think, makes it really exciting. So, Well, sometimes you have to go from the fiction angle just to get the person's attention, and they don't really know what you're sneaking in behind the fiction. Yeah. That, that, that way they... They don't realize what you're really trying to tell them. They'll say, well, it's only fiction. But, you know, a lot of movies are being made like that right now, a lot of TV series. 
Yeah, and, it's, uh, we're, we're going more toward the metaphysical. Absolutely, and you know, I think it's it's brilliant from the perspective of the producers because it's so interesting, and I think there's so many people right now um, that have such a great interest in kind of the the higher self or the the greater you know the greater potential for for mankind, if you will. Um, yes. Yeah. But you know, before, oh, even twenty years ago, even uh, probably less than that. Uh, people wouldn't, weren't allowed to do things like this because they were afraid of offending the church. The church would come down on them. Sure. And I think now that doesn't seem to matter anymore. They are going ahead and doing it, and it's being accepted. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But you look at the success but the bleep pad. Yeah. They were really amazed at that. Yeah, they had a, a smashing success. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, can Everybody I ask thought, you? well, you know, nobody's interested in those things. But this show, there's a lot out there. Yeah. Oh, wise like to say we're underground. Yeah. <laughs> we're undercover, you know, when people are always afraid to let people know yeah. what they're really interested in. Can I ask you a question, Dolores? Oh, well, I was, well we are the underground anyway. Now it's no longer the underground. We're coming up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The question I, I have is, um, you know, with my father's experience, I was going to ask you if there's any way to tell, um, from my perspective, if if I don't consciously have any, any memories of any types of, uh, you know, experiences, but I was wondering if there's a way that you can kind of tell or any, any telltale signs that, you know, you've had any kind of a contact or experience. Well, I don't know if there's any telltale signs, but I think your interest is one way. Mm-hmm. that it has been sparked by something. Sure. It's on a subconscious level that you don't even realize. Yeah. But, um, you, know, you, know, I, you know, you know I'm a hypnotherapist, and yeah. I have people coming, oh, I, I see hundreds and thousands of people, but some of them come and they'll say, oh, I just want to see if I've had a UFO experience. I think it would be neat. I think it would be, <laughs> it's fun, you know, and I say, oh, yeah, you know. But I don't like to work with anyone that just want to do it for that reason. Because I say, yeah. don't open up that can of worms. Yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Sure. Well, you know, a lot of them just think it's it's exciting or something. Yeah. But the ones who, I think who are really having the experience, they don't really have a lot of memories. Yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So I don't like to work with them unless they're having problems with it, you know, because I'm not out there you know, looking for sensationalism. I work with them as a therapist. But I would be willing to bet you've had something, something has had to spark this interest. And Certainly. It's, it's always better if you don't really know at a conscious level. Mm-hmm. I'm One amazed of the reasons... that your father uh, remembers so much of it. Yeah. One of the reasons that I asked was because you know, with the whole star child thing and kind of yeah. the, that whole thing, you know, I'm, I'm curious if there's any way to know if you're a part of that or, you know, that whole thing. And well, I don't I've know investigated, too much about it. You know, I've investigated families where they go back to the, the child, the parents, the grandparents going all the way back, mm-hmm. and they all have had some kind of experience or contact, but mm-hmm. they don't want to talk about it, especially if you get back into the grandparents. Sure. But it's as though it is a, uh, they're going through the genetic line. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, being uh, visited and checked on. Sure. The genes are passed down. But I don't okay. know if there's any definite way to say yes, except that I think the interest is there, and that should tell you something. How common Especially would you... Especially when you're so, uh, you know, convinced it is positive. Yeah, yeah. So... If you have had an experience, it's, it's been a good one. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would believe but that, say, too. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, it, just go along yeah. with what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And who knows? But, <laughs> you know. Okay, we're coming up to the top. I have to stop about five till. But um, are you, you are selling these documentaries, aren't you? You bet. You bet. They're, uh, they're available at fastwalkers.com. Um, they're all available there. So, uh, what I want you to do, I want you to promote now and tell people how they can uh, find these. Okay. Uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're interested in finding out more information about uh, the, the movie Fast Walkers that features 
35 of the world's top experts, uh, photographed in high-definition video. Um, it's an award-winning presentation. We would love to have you come to fastwalkers.com and check it out. See the movie trailer for yourself there. And also there's a, there's a free video clip online for just about almost everybody who's in the program. So you can go there and you can see some free interviews uh, from the people in the movie and uh, check out the movie trailer and, and see it. If, you, if it resonates with you and it's something that interests you, we'd love for you to have a copy. Uh, and check out the open files as well if you want more in-depth information. And those will be, um, as we have more interest, we'll release more uh, of the Fast Walkers open files volumes as well. So check out fastwalkers.com. Uh, I'm Anthony Miles. Uh, I also have a video production business. That is my primary business. Uh, that's Fourth Wall Productions. Uh, that's uh, fourthwalltvandfilm.com. If you're interested in making uh, a, a video or a documentary film or anything like that, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I'm a busy guy, but I'm always looking for for projects. So <laughs> that's it. You're always looking because uh, you never know. You never, I think it, it's boring whenever you can't find anything. Then you have to stop. It's always good to keep working. Yep. That's the important thing. But if they check out your website, they will be able to order online then, can't they? That's correct. If you go to fastwalkers.com, there's, uh, there's links on there to buy the DVD. Uh, there's a link to the Safe Space website on there also if you want more information about that, uh, featured guests, uh, and all of the different Fast Walkers um, uh, movies and videos. Those are available on there as well. One thing I didn't mention is that we, uh, we did give... Um, a Fast Walkers Open Files, which what we call the Congressional Edition. We gave one of those to everybody in the, uh, I believe, in the Congress and the Senate, and then also uh, in the Canadian Parliament also have all received one of those complimentary because we really were trying to get the information out and help with the exopolitics movement and help open the world from that. You mean the ones in Washington, in Congress and the Senate? That's correct. Is that what you said? You gave each one of the of the senators and the representatives a free copy. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know that uh, that should uh, spark some interest there because see, I I have uh, done radio interviews and uh, lectures in Washington, and I've been approached. You know, they don't want you to know that they're talking to you, but there is an interest there. They just don't make it public. I think yeah. that's a very good idea that you've uh, sent that to them. Yeah, well, we tried. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're coming to the time I have to sign off here. But uh, I think this has been very valuable information, and it's an honor to have you on the show tonight, Anthony. Thank you, Dolores. I sure appreciate it. And uh, maybe you, you can talk to me offline one time about what actually inspired you to call. <laughs> I'd love to talk about that. <laughs> okay, and I hope everybody's going to be calling in and ordering the movie because it really is good. It's very well professionally done. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, so good night, Anthony. Thanks, Dolores. Have a great night. And good night, everybody out there. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.